Now the colour palette is obviously left in the same condition. Now what I can do is, the paint's grey, I can pick up some of the paint's grey and I can use that. Again, the same procedure, put the water on first and then mix the colour in the middle. Now to start with, I want to mix quite a lot of the colour with the water, but I can just use it neat, straight from the colour and you can see it's not too thick at this point as well. Now the last technique you did was called wet into wet because you put the water on first. This is a dry technique. So very simply, get the brush and absolutely load it up with the colour and starting round about an inch or so up the paper, I want to paint a big, wide mountain shape. I can continue that shape across on the other side. So imagine a big letter M just spread wide across the entire width of your paper. And then very simply what I can do is I can just continue this. Notice the paint goes on very smooth, just like cream, it goes on very easily. It's going over the top of the yellow at the bottom of the sky and it goes on and I can just pop it straight on there and that's giving me a basic mountain but it's too basic for what it is. What I want to do is paint another mountain and give it some extra detail. So that has gone on very simply. Now what I need to do is let that dry again because I'm going to put a second coat of the same colour, exactly the same grey, over the top of this. And what that'll do is, because watercolour is transparent, you can layer it up, you can put one layer over the other and each layer gets darker and darker. So again, that needs to dry, which means, yes, you can have another cuppa. Or of course, you can use a hairdryer. <laughs> That's nice and dry now. What you may notice is that you get a little yellow cast coming through the grey mountains. That's perfectly fine. And that's exactly what a watercolour painting does. It's transparent sheets of glass built over the top of one another. And that's the way you build up a scene. Now it's nice and dry. Using exactly the same colour, same brush, I can just build up and paint a second mountain, giving me a, an extra sense of depth, more of a three-dimensional feeling to the painting. It's getting good. Let's carry on. Exactly the same colour, no difference whatsoever, plenty of it. Now pick a mountain, do you want mountain number one or mountain number two? Well I want to go for mountain number two because I want to paint over mountain number two again using exactly the same colour and the same technique. Just go over it again. Now when I get to the point where the two mountains meet, where the valley comes in, what I want to do is I want to continue that line down. Continue the line downwards as opposed to painting over the second mountain. And I can block all this in, fill it all in as I go along. And I can just very simply bring this down, bring it down, 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 all the way to the bottom and then block it in. Now what you should be starting to see is that although I've used the same colour, it's given a second mountain, it's given a distance, a sense of depth to the scene. And it just helps because it's pushed this mountain into the distance and brought this one, which was mountain number two, into the foreground. So it's giving me three dimensions. And hopefully you can see the sky making some sense. Now, that is a perfectly acceptable watercolour painting. It's a very simple watercolour painting, but it is a starting point. And that's exactly what you need to do. That's getting over the sort of painting nerves, and it's just getting you started. But what we could do now is maybe if you're feeling a little bit adventurous, let's go for it. Let's stick a little house on this corner. Right, so we've got really close in now. Now using the same colour, using exactly the same colour, the same brush, I'm just going to paint in a very simple shape there. Somewhat of a little house shape. Now what I can do is I can put a straight line, put a straight line, around about an inch long for this. And then put a little bit of a angle from the edge of the straight line pointing down to about four o'clock. And then do the same from the opposite side, put a straight line coming down. Now that's pointing from the centre line down to about seven o'clock and then put two straight lines coming down from this like so and you put this sort of strange wide barn shape and I can just fill this in, fill it in very simply, go over the top of it. Now what you might find is it starts to run into the bottom area. Well that's fine, just sort of work over the top of this and just run the colour into it, let it become part of the painting. Now you can see I've added this simple, simple silhouette almost of a house. 
Now what I could do using the same brush and the same colour is pop a little chimney, pop a little chimney just at the side so they can have a fire. Now again, dry that off and then we can put a little bit of shade in and maybe even some birds in the sky. Now this is nice and dry this area and using the same colour again I can just put a little bit of a darker side. Now let's just say that the chimney has got a darker side to it. The sunlight's coming this way so I can put a very thin line down one side of the chimney using the same colour. Of course if your colour's getting a bit weak at this point then just thicken up by bringing some more Payne's Grey into the mixture. Bring a straight line coming down and then I can follow the back edge, follow the same area that you did before, like so. And then I can also put a little bit of a line coming down there as well. So imagine you're painting like a triangular gable end at this point. And then I can just square this off at the bottom, fill it in, square it off, fill it in. And it's giving me a shadow side to the building, making it a little bit more three dimensional. I can also run with the tip of the brush, a single line across. That goes underneath the guttering or the eaves of the building. Why not even push the boat out and put a little couple of spots for some windows, as you can see, very crude, very simple, and then a doorway in the center, and then another window maybe on the opposite side, very simple, basic. Now working over the top of this mountain, the close mountain, I can use the same colour again. But this time what I want to do is get some tissue and just lightly, just pick the colour up and just lightly stroke it once on the front, turn it over once on the back. So it's taking some of the colour off the brush. And then I can just lightly paint with the side of the brush and glide over the top, forward and back, following this, the contour and the shape of the mountain in front of the house gliding over the top and it's just catching little bits. Now this is called dry brush. The brush is not quite as wet as it was when you started. Now the great thing about this is you can thicken up your colour slightly and just go over it again and again and again. You can keep building up and up and up that colour until you get quite an interesting effect from your watercolour. It's giving detail to the foreground. Now for me, the final step of any watercolour painting, landscape, obviously, got to be a landscape, is I can use the same brush, the same colour, maybe slightly stronger colour, and put a couple of the old feathered friends just flapping around in the sky. There they go, flickering away, flying away in the sky. It gives it a little bit of interest. So there you go, what a great starting point for your watercolour painting. A very simple but more importantly effective and quite realistic scene. It's the way watercolour is built up and of course the most important thing from the painting is you've learnt some techniques. Wet into wet for the sky, how to dry your paintings, how the paper works a little bit and of course mixing colours. You've made a starting point for one of the most interesting sides of watercolour painting and that's the colour mixing. And then you've learnt how the watercolour paint is transparent and how it shows the colours underneath through. And also, of course, one of the most important things you've taken away from today is that you can build up and up the colours using the same colour again and again. You can add layers to the paint and make interesting, distant effects in any watercolour painting. So join me next time as we carry on with the Matthew Palmer Beginner's Guide to Watercolour Painting. Give it a go and don't be afraid to get started. Mm -hmm.